Scripture lesson is from Isaiah chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. I will sing for the one I love a song about his vineyard. My loved one had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He dug it up and cleared it of stones and planted it with the choicest vines. He built a watchtower in it and cut out a wine press as well. Then he looked for a crop of good grapes but it yielded only bad fruit. Now you dwellers in Jerusalem and people of Judah judge between me and my vineyard. What more could I could have been done for my vineyard than I have done for it? When I looked for good grapes, why did it only yield bad? Now I will tell you what I am going to do uh, to my vineyard. I will take away its hedge and it will be destroyed. I will break down its wall, and it will be trampled. I will make it a wasteland, neither pruned nor cultivated, and briars and thorns will grow there. I will command the clouds not to rain on it. The vineyard of the Lord Almighty is the nation of Israel, and the people of Judah are the vines he delighted in, and he looked for justice but saw bloodshed for righteousness, but heard cries of the distressed. Woe to you who add house to house and join field to field till no space is left and you, leave, you live alone in the land. This is the word of the Lord. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, leadership is very important. And the title of my sermon is A Love Song for My Beloved Vineyard. And when you read many leadership books, you will find a good list of skills for uh, needed for effective leadership. However, in our passage, God points to one aspect that is often overlooked. Leaders who appreciate the value of the community they serve. Today, we read a very well-known passage. In order to understand it better, we have to examine the intended target of the message. It's accepted that in verse 3, the ones receiving criticism are the dwellers of Jerusalem and the people of Judah. And verse 7 seems to add to that notion with the phrases, the nation of Israel and the people of Judah. However, these three phrases, dwellers of Jerusalem, people of Judah, and the nation of Israel, might be mistranslations. And recent studies suggest that the phrases should be translated as ruler of uh, Jerusalem, leader of Judah, and the dynasty of Israel, quite different from traditional translations. And this criticism for the leadership is very clear in Isaiah 314. The Lord enters his, into his judgment against the elders and the leaders of his people. See, you know, the shifting the criticism away from the people of Judah to the leadership is very um, important in light of the agricultural development happening during that time. Now, in our age, Silicon Valley and technology is the way we view um, investments or you know, improvement in our, in, our, in our economy. But at that time, vineyards were the technological advancement of that time. And archaeologists discovered that during the 8th century BCE, about the time when prophet Isaiah was active, there was an increase of vineyards in ancient Israel. Grapes, especially wines, were precious commodities. They were exported to many countries, surrounding countries for handsome profits. And scholars conjecture that these economic gain was the motivation for um, consolidation of fields and housing as mentioned in verse eight. So this is what Isaiah does. Isaiah draws the attention of the elites and the ruling class by the use of the metaphor of vineyard. Vineyards were prized possession. On top of that, Isaiah said, this vineyard set on choice piece of land. And then he says, the owner built a tower and dug up a wine press within it. Now, mentioning of these two things, because towers and wine press were not necessity, but it was, they were an added value to this vineyard. So, Everybody had their attention to this, prof to this prophet. Then the prophet writes, in order to gain more sympathy, the owners dug it up and cleared it of stones and planted the choicest vines. He built a watchtower in it and cut out a wine press as well. Well, you know what happened? Then he looked for crops of good grapes, but yielded bad ones, right? That was. A, a, a good description of investment going south. What was the rate of return on this investment? Negative 30, 40%. And the, and the prophet got them riled up because the audience knew, man, that's too bad. Investment going bad like that. And then the uh, prophet gained their uh, sympathetic response. And now he asked, what more could have been done for it? When I look for good grapes, why did it yield only bad? In other words, God is saying, look, you know how precious investment funds and due diligence went into this vineyard. You waited for big payoff. However, it didn't go as well. And you know how disappointing 
it is to see all that time and effort being wasted. Now, do you know how I feel about my vineyard? Initially, the criticism seemed to be directed towards the ruling class. And most sermons on this passage rail against bad leaders. But that's one level. But the deeper level is, I believe that God was trying to say, he said, the core of the message is, is asking leaders to really appreciate and understand the true value of the community they, that they serve. As our Isaiah passage uh, points out, Israel was a splendid vineyard. But to apply this lesson on a more broad base, I want to say the world we live in is a precious vineyard that took thousands of years to cultivate with years of building up expensive and extensive infrastructure to improve the quality of life. However, there are people in our society, including good Christians, that envision, they sometimes delight in seeing an ap apocalyptic demise of the wonderful vineyard that God has spent so many years cultivating. For me, our passage seems to be like a warning, but on the, on the flip side is calling for leaders to appreciate the wonderful community that God has given for us. As you know, <clears throat> Boris Johnson had to resign as a prime minister of the UK. According to a BBC article, there were five points that drove him out. And one of them was known as the party gate. Right, you can know, right. Basically, Boris Johnson was involved in parties at 10 Downing Street, his official government housing. These gatherings occurred during the height of COVID infection while the nation was at a strict lockdown. He went against his own mandates. On top of that, him and his cabinet try to mislead or dismiss investigators. This was a huge dis disappointment to the Brits. His approval rating declined sharply. Partygate demonstrated to the people that Boris Johnson did not really care about them. Even though he mandated lockdown in the name of safety, safety, he and his government in private acted carelessly, endangering many lives with their foolish gatherings. Our text asks, what more can be done to protect, nurture, to grow our precious community? From God's perspective, he has done enough. He has given us a wonderful community, community to live in. But from our perspective, God is asking us to be leaders, to appreciate, support, and nurture this wonderful vineyard. Our world, this great vineyard of God, is made up of smaller precious vineyards. For example, in the Commonwealth of Virginia, there are many counties and cities, and within those counties and cities, there are school boards and election offices, nonprofits, companies, and many organizations that are vital to that, to that region. Literally hundreds, if not thousands, of leaders are needed to maintain and develop these communities. Leadership is such a key. And I, in fact, I believe one of the most important tasks of the church is to make leaders for the transformation of the world. For Jesus, his disciples became apostles, the sent ones. They were groomed to be leaders of communities and vineyards to all parts of the world. Discipleship, in essence, is leadership. And the, Isaiah was calling for leaders to care about their community. Therefore, therefore, if you're serving as leadership capacity for scouts, HOA, election board, PTA, closet, in all capacity, I want to thank you for the caring for the wonderful vineyards 
that God established in our world. And moreover, specifically in our context, I thank all of you for your wonderful contributions to this vineyard of God called Drainfield UMC. You know, you notice that I'm always thanking people before every sermon. And I mean that from the bottom of the heart. Without great leadership, we can't have a wonderful community like Drainsville. And we honored one of the leaders, Roberta, as she moves near family in Blacksburg. Now, I told you about a bad leader from the UK. In closing, I want to tell you about a great one from the same country. She's known as Princess Diana. She died on August 31st, 1997, exactly, almost exactly 25 years ago. That week, Mother Teresa died too. But the world was focused on Princess Di. It was understandable that they were. But I was a little peeved. I said, what good is it to serve the poor when the, uh, when the world is obsessed with this pretty princess, I thought. But the truth is, more I discovered, the truth is that Princess Di was more than a beautiful person. Whether she carefully cultivated the per public persona or it came naturally, but she was known as the people's princess for the way she related to and care for her subjects. One of the most memorable stories was when she was photographed shaking the hand of an AIDS patient. In the mid 80s, AIDS terrified the world because of lack of understanding as well as misinformation. But in April of 1987, Princess Diana opened the UK's first HIV unit that exclusively cared for the patients infected with the disease. The thing that showed her incredible empathy was when in front of the world's media, Princess Diana shook the hand of an AIDS patient without any gloves. And doing that showed the world that the disease was not passed on by touch. With a single gesture, she demonstrated her incredible compassion and care. She is still the most loved royalty on earth. Our passage reminds us that we live in a beloved vineyard of God. God has carefully placed us on fertile soil, lush with love, potential, and mercy. God rolled away the cumbersome stones and cultivated with his sweat and tears. Then he planted the most choice vines and nourished them with timely rain and rich fertilizers. But all this would have been enough. But you know what he did? He built towers and wine princes. Did you know that Drainville have our own tower? That really elevates our valley, right? But more importantly, like princes die, we have leaders who truly appreciate the value of this vineyard and everyone who worships in it. I want to thank you, all the leaders. We're going to have a council meeting, but I want to thank you for all the ways you love our community. Thank you so much. And if you have the time and place in your life, please consider joining leadership in care for this wonderful vineyard. Let us pray. Now, the, our prayer is based on Song of Songs, chapter 4. Dear God, the vineyard you planted is a delightful garden, a paradise, a whole orchard of succulent fruits, pomegranates, ripe apricots, peaches, oranges, and grapes. You planted mint, cinnamon, lavender, and all kinds of aromatic herbs. We delight in the beauty, aroma, and the abundance of this community. We confess that you are the garden fountain, a well of flowing water streaming down from heaven above. Help us to be faithful and caring 
stewards of this beloved vineyard. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>for joining us if you're interested in visiting us in person we are at the corner of liberty meeting court and sugarland road look forward to seeing you soon